start by placing a dry fly hook in your vise. Now I'm using a fire hole sticks number 419. However, any normal shank or even up to a 2x long shank dry fly hook will do, like these two Daiichi hook styles. Start your thread with the hook eye length or two down the hook shank and bring your thread all the way down to the start of the bend of the hook. Now we're gonna need some feathers from a rooster cape, like this number three Mex. You need both a brown and a grizzly. And we're looking for the larger feathers here, down at the bottom of the cape like so. However, this cape seems to have a lot of black mixed in. That's okay, just try to search for one without as much black. Hey, this one will work. Now strip off all the fuzzy fibers as we will need the stiffer barbs here. And you can see here there's quite a bit of brown at the tip, so this is gonna work. And do the same thing with the grizzly, and then place them together and align the tips as best as you can. Pluck off a good amount of these fibers, about 10 to 15 should be good enough. And clip off all the squirrelies at the base. Now we will need to measure out about a hook shank length, and then transfer that measurement to your other hand and tie them in with two loose wraps. Check the length, and if for some reason they're a little too long like I have here, adjust them by pulling them to the right length. Not necessary, but I also like putting one wrap under the fibers to hold them out straight. Then make a few tight wraps to lock them into place. Now clip off the ends, about two thirds of the way up the hook shank, and then clean up that section with a few wraps. Go back down and back up to really make this area smooth. And then end with your thread at about the spot where you started your thread. Now we will need a grizzly hen neck, like this Met's neck. The reason why we're using hen here is that the tips of hen are much more rounded than come on a rooster neck. Find the right size feather and pluck off two of them. To get the right size depends on your hook size, and I find plucking from the center of this cape is perfect for a size 16 atoms. Align the tips together, but with the curve of the feather angling away from each other like so. Then pinch the tip of the feather and pull all the rest of the fibers downward and out of the way. This will make two wings that splay outward like so. Make sure the wings are the same length as your hook shank, and if they're not, redo this previous step. Once they're the correct size, tie them in right where you left off your thread last. You want them angling forward and with each feather on each side of the hook. Try your best to keep them from spinning as well. Then trim off the waist area, and also snip off any errant or missed feather fibers. Once you're happy with it, then pull the wings rearward and make a few wraps in front of them, forming sort of a thread dam to hold the wings straight up. You might need to separate them a bit, and then place a wrap in between the feathers going across one way and then across the other, and this will help keep them splayed outward. After adjusting to the correct position, bring your thread all the way back to the start of the tail. So originally the bodies of these were dubbed with natural fur, I think from muskrat. But in modern times here, fine synthetic dubbing like UV2 Fine and Dry in Adam's Gray color works really well. You really don't need a lot of this, just a small pinch like so. Make a very fine and smooth noodle on your thread, forming a bit of a taper as well. Then make touching wraps with your noodle up the hook shank, trying to create a very even taper up the hook until you reach just shy of the wing. If you need to add more dubbing, then do so. If you have any errant fibers that you missed, you should trim them off now before the next step. Now with that brown rooster neck, select a hackle from it that is the right size for your hook. And having a hackle gauge like this one can really help you find the right size. You can see that the brown is the size 16 here. And you also want a grizzly in the same size as well. To prepare these feathers, have the shiny side of the feather facing you and strip off the bottom fibers that might be off color or too long on both sides with a few extra stripped off on the right side. Strip off any remaining stem to leave just a small tie-in spot. And then place that feather on the side of your fly with the side that's more stripped angling up. Then tie that in with a few wraps behind the wing and a few in front of the wing. Clip off any excess stem close enough so it won't hang over the eye and then bring your thread back to behind the wings. Do the same thing with the grizzly hackle but leave your thread forward just shy of the hook eye. Grab the grizzly hackle with some pliers and proceed to hackle your fly. Two to three wraps behind the wing and two to three in front are plenty. It is much easier if you move the wings out of the way on each turn of the hackle. When you have enough turns on the hackle, then hold the hackle out about 60 degrees and capture it with your thread. Now it helps to wiggle your thread through the hackles a bit to help keep from trapping as many of the fibers. 
Place two wraps to capture the hackle, and then remove the hackle pliers and stroke all the fibers rearward. Now you're always going to have a few hackle fibers that don't want to cooperate, but just keep stroking them and they will lay rearward. Once they lay rearward, make a few wraps over them to keep them angling back and away from the eye. And then trim off the extra hackle feather. Now do the same thing with your brown hackle up through the grizzly hackle. A couple turns behind, a couple in front, and then capture, stroke rearward, and clip off any waste in the same way as the grizzly. However, I find I trap a lot more feathers on the second hackle for some reason. If you do as well, no harm in clipping off a few of them. Once you're happy, then whip finish your fly. Now with the difficulty of adding cement on this fly, I find painting some cement onto the thread before whip finishing is much easier. And there we have it, an Adams dry fly. Probably one of the more popular and effective dry flies ever created. I also wanted to remind you that all the materials used today are in the description section of this video, but you might have to click the show more button to expand the section to view. I also have included links to where you can purchase them online. Also included a discount code for the fly artist as well, as a special thank you for being my subscriber. So please use that as you won't be able to find deals this good anywhere else. Well thanks for watching. If you like this sort of thing, please subscribe and share with all your fish-loving friends. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.